Kala Linux is a Linux distribution designed for penetration testing and it comes with hundreds of tools. This video covers the installation of Kala Linux. Hi, I'm David Godibaze from IT Solutions Network. I've been in the IT for over 20 years and now I've got my own YouTube channel. So let's get started. So what we need to do first is to navigate to Google and search for Fancy Security Color Linux. Then we go to this website, it says Kali Linux Custom Image Downloads. And here we'll see these pre-built VMware images. And we want to download one of them. Now, while we are waiting to download the Kali Linux VM image, let's go ahead and download the actual VMware Station player for Windows. For that, we need to Google VMware Workstation player download click on the download link and under the try workstation 16 player for windows we click download now okay vmware workstation is downloaded now let's go ahead and install it let's minimize our chrome here we're going to click next obviously we need to accept the terms and license agreement Next again, I don't want to join VMware Customer Experience Program. Next, we'll leave it as default. Next, and now VMware Workstation is installing. Okay, VMware Workstation Player is installed. Now let's go ahead and see if our Kali Linux is downloaded and sure it is, it is downloaded. Now by default the Kali Linux VMware image is archived using 7-zip archive and Windows doesn't have the option to extract that so we need to go ahead and download 7-zip. Let's google 7-zip download and download it. I'm going to be downloading the installation version of 64-bit and I'm going to click it to install. After the installation we should be able to extract the archive of Kala Linux and let's try. Right click, here we have 7-zip now and extract to color linux folder okay we extracted the color linux and we installed the vmware workstation player now since the color linux is extracted let's go ahead and move that folder into virtual machine folder this is where we extracted the color linux if you go inside we'll see the there is a VMware images and this is all part of one virtual machine we need to cut this and paste it in the document virtual machines now let's go ahead and open the VMware workstation open a virtual machine and here's our Cal Linux and let's open it this virtual image, virtual Kali Linux, is ready to run and fully operate. Let's see if we need to change anything in the settings. So we have 2 GB, that's supposed to be enough. We have 4 CPUs, it should be good. 80 GB of the hard drive, I think minimum is 4 GB, so we are good here as well. CD drive, we don't care about the CD drive, and the network adapter. Now let's talk about the network settings a little bit. So we have options here, 
bridged. The way bridged works is the virtual machine will be on the same broadcast domain as our host computer. So if our subnet is 192.168.1.0 24, the call links will be on the same subnet. It's going to be in the same broadcast domain. So we can use the same DHCP server, same gateway, internet gateway, and the same resources from the network. But you need to make sure that if, if you have several network interfaces, you need to make sure which one you're bridging to. I have cable connection and Wi-Fi. Let's check which one is used. The cable connection is used, Wi-Fi is unchecked. That's okay, that's good. Now, NAT settings. The way NAT settings works is the VMware workstation will take entire subnet from the virtual guest all the IP, secondary IPs from the computer, if there is any, and will translate into the IP of the host computer. So for the network resources, anyone on the network will see traffic coming from Kali Linux as my traffic coming from my host computer. Okay, that's what NAT does. Now, host only. The host only is the local connection between virtual computer the Cal Linux in our case, and my host computer. So it will won't it won't have the internet connection and it will be limited to access to my computer. Now let's bridge the connection because we want to be on the same subnet as my host computer and click OK again. Now we can click play virtual machine. Here, VMware tells us that there's a new version of VM tools drivers for Linux, and since the Kali Linux is Linux, that's why we get this message now, and we can download and install these drivers. That's not an issue at all. Okay, as you can see, Kali Linux has tried to load the image into VMware workstation. Kali Linux is loaded, and let's try the default password. So, Kalinux has two default username and password, depends on which image you downloaded for Raspberry Pi, for VM, or for I or the ISO image, and things like that. You might, we might have the username root and the password tool, tool like T double O R, like reverse root, or we might have username and password Kali Kali. Let's go ahead and try Kali Kali first. And yes, it's Kali Kali. Okay, this is our Kali Linux virtual machine and it's installed. Let's try and see if we have a ping, if we have the network access. Now well, let's ping Google DNS. So we can even go ahead and the update the system. sudo apt get update yes. Password Kali, and it will update the repositories and will be ready to update the entire system after entering the apt get upgrade. Now, you need to know that you can actually copy the text from your host computer to Kali Linux virtual system, and to demonstrate that. Let's go ahead and copy text from my computer to Kali Linux or copy from Kali and paste it into host. Let's go ahead and uh, copy this data and try to paste it in the windows. And sure enough, we have copied the text from Kali Linux and pasted it on the windows. We can do the opposite as well, copy the script or pre-made a command with all the attributes and paste it in the columns, not to type in the columns and use some kind of copy paste. Okay, once it's done, we have freshly installed Kalinux on our computer and whatever we do with Kalinux, it won't affect our Windows computer. So if you mess up the system, the Kalinux, you delete some files which you're not supposed to delete or you damage the system, the Kalinux, it won't affect your Windows, because they are separate operating systems, one running inside the other.
And this is how you install Kalinux on the Windows machine. So what we did is we downloaded the Kalinux pre-built image. We downloaded the VM Workstation Player. We opened Kalinux image in Workstation Player. And we are running the update. And we were able to ping Google DNS. So the Kalinux is physically connected to the real world and it has the internet access. That was it for today. I'm back. Since we upgraded the system, it's ready to shut down. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.